Hello guys, thank you for joining me. They're gonna cut this, just gonna cut the intro short because I am late and I want to make sure I didn't do it. I apologize. It's been it's April it's uh next week is a deadline, our last one of the year, where we have all the extensions for 2015. First of all, before I start, my name is Wayne Belisle. I'm a CPA, I have my own firm. We basically uh do three things. We do tax returns, tax planning, and profit coaching and our tax planning has saved our clients over 6.8 million in the last five years um like i said i apologize for being late uh things happen we're a week away from a deadline and, and if you're one of those business clients that show up in october or september understand your cpa really might like you personally but really doesn't like you business wise <laughs> because it's always the people that show up late that uh that that tend to be uh, a little tougher business-wise. Anyways, I forgot to shut the shade behind me. Hold on a second. Anyways, a little announcement. Because next week is literally the day before the deadline, I can tell you right now we're not going to have one next week. So uh, don't, you know, we'll be back. We'll stay on schedule. Like I say every week, our, this, this uh, live event is brought to you by the uh, 90 day profit publishing profit maximizer publishing which they did my 90 day profit reset look you know this thing's full of chapter after chapter and idea after idea of how you can turn around your business and reset your profits from black from red to black in no time at all it's really a book that i designed for any business to, to that's ongoing or even a startup but really more of an ongoing business is what i had in mind to sit down and say all right let's do a health check consider your annual checkup your annual health checkup for your business. Um, I got a doctor's appointment after the October 15th, which truthfully is the wrong time to go because I've had a few months of stress. So I'm sure, you know, blood pressure won't be where it's at, but that's all right. That's probably the best time to go because you get the doctor to chew you out. So you fix things. Think about the book the same way, except you don't have the book probably won't chew you out. Um, as a coach, we work with our clients to basically chew them out. Sometimes we have to give them a little tough love. This week I'm talking about how spending 15 minutes a week can massively increase your profits. Well, think about this. You get in your car, you jump out, you don't just, you might have a plan. I mean, you decide where you're going to go, all right? But we also look, we have an instrument panel there on our car that tells us how fast we're going, how much fuel we have left, you know, air in the tires, um, you know, uh, the oil pressure, whether the check engine light turned on, that scary one that goes, oh crap, I need to get this fixed. We do that with our car. We don't have anything like that for our business, all right? Well, this is truthfully one of the key things you should have if you're in a business is your dashboard. And it's really just a few simple things, okay? And I have five reports that I've set up with my clients when I'm, when I'm working with them. And I didn't get a chance to print them, so if I'm looking off to the side, it's because I want to make sure I don't forget anything. I cover them enough times that I should. Now, look, I work with business under owners all the time, and I understand that the last thing they want to do is numbers. That's why I hired a CPA. That's why I got a bookkeeper. The honest to God truth is it, it's your job. If you're a business owner, numbers are the language of business. It's how you keep score. It's like going to a baseball game. The world's the... the uh, the playoffs are on right now, okay? And it'd be kind of boring to watch if nobody knew what the score was or what the count is or what inning you're in. Well, it's the same thing with our business if we don't do. Now, I understand people will tell, business owners tell me it's, it's, you know, it's boring. And, you know, there's a quote I like that I use for this. It's from Helen McSinnis. I can't, if I mispronounce her name, she'll never know. Uh, but that's all right. Nothing is interesting if you're not interested. <laughs> Isn't that true? And look, I understand the last thing most business owners want to do is spend some quality time with their records. That Okay, because they don't understand them. I mean, they have ADD. They have so many hats to wear that they're reviewing their books gets lost in the weeds. The last thing they want, that's why we hire anything. But what I have noticed is that the very top, the top 1%, heck, the top 1% of the top 1% know their numbers. The clients that I work with that are doing the best 
understand that accounting is a language of business, like I said, and that reviewing certain accounting reports on a regular basis is a major part of increasing their profit, sales, and cash flow. All right, simple as that. Business is not a game of numbers. Business is a game of human behavior, in particular, the business owner's behavior. All right, that, 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 I'm not getting esoteric here. What I'm saying is good accounting data gives us a scorecard to measure our behavior and its effects, all right? I call it 15 minutes a week. Other people have called it the five minutes books. I call it the, the weekly or daily scorecard, uh, whatever, all right? But there are five things that every business owner needs to see and their records should be done. Now, like if you're using something like QuickBooks, get your CPA to set up management reports. You can set up certain reports and memorize them. And then you go to memorized reports, manager's reports, you just open them and change the dates. It's something very easy. I do it for almost everybody I do training for. And we're you know, going to be changing some things in January, and I'm going to be doing it for just about all our clients. We're going to take some time and make sure we do that. So number one, what is number one? Daily profit and loss, weekly profit and loss, monthly with profit and loss, year-to-date profit and loss. Why? What you want to do is you want to see and help identify what's working for you and not. If I give you a full year, you don't know which year. Well, something worked, something didn't work. If I'm looking at a week or a month, I can tell, you know, it's not that good of a month. What happened? I still remember. A week, I got a better chance. I mean, you know, I'm not, I can't remember what I had for breakfast. Just a little, you know, well, that's bad because I'm creature habit and have cereal for breakfast it's just a question of which brand okay lunch yesterday all right never mind what went wrong where i didn't make as much money last month i'm more likely to to know hmm, last week i didn't bill very much but look those costs are higher i understand that because that's still in my frame of reference okay you you want to identify two things all right because you have limited resources and time look if you got all the money in the world and you want to blow it then you don't really need to listen to me Okay, but I don't know very many businesses that have that. They all, the business owner has limited resources and limited time. Okay, it's simple as that. Okay, so what we're looking at is you want to identify where you should focus those limited resources and time. And you do that by comparing results from month to month to help us identify trends and react quickly. Comparing to industry average also and seeing where you made money. Second report you want to look at is sales reports by products or customers. Sales report by customer with related cost and profits help us identify our most profitable customers. Go back to a video I did before that I'll probably come back and visit, the 80-20 rule. And another one where I'm getting 80% of my profits from 20% of my customers. Another one where the fastest way to grow your business is by selling more to your most profitable customers. Second one. You know, well, if you don't know who they are, <laughs> okay, this report will help you identify who they are and make sure you focus on giving them excellent service and looking for opportunities to sell them more because they've already shown a few things. One, they know you, they like you, they trust you, and they're willing to pay you. <laughs> Can't beat that kind of customer, all right? Um, other way to do this, I had a good salesman. I, he didn't look at his financials very much, but he always wanted his customer, his sales by customer quarterly. And he wanted it for the last three years, which, you know, I asked him what he used it for. And it was really pretty smart. So he was looking to see new customers. And he would personally call the new customers, you know, large. He, didn't, he couldn't call everybody, but the ones that were over a certain level, I think, you know, I forget what the order size, but whatever. To make it reasonable, he would give them a personal call and thank them for doing business with us. Is there anything they didn't like that, they, that he could improve? Is there something that they liked? All right. Can we use you as a testimonial? Do you have referrals? Is there something else we can help you with? And he'd ask, he knew enough to ask the kind of questions that got answers and got orders. All right. He also looked for people who hadn't purchased from him that used to and made a personal, if it was large enough, he made a personal visit to them to find out what was going on. A lot of times, out of sight, out of mind. Sometimes some slick salesperson came in and he'd have to resell, but he got a lot of those back. That's another reason to look at, you know, your sales reports. I have another one where somebody was, a client of mine noticed that a, a, a large uh, customer had stopped buying from him. And when they found it, we found it early enough because we had these kind of reports. We found it in the, after the first quarter. He should have found it after the first month, but they weren't looking at these reports on a monthly basis. I was looking at them quarterly. So when they went out and found out what happened is the person who was buying from them had quit, and a new person came in and switched to some friend of theirs. 
They went back in, went over their head, went back to the owner, explained why they'd always done it. The owner didn't even know it had happened. Okay. Now, if they hadn't caught it, it would have cost them three to four hundred thousand dollars in sales for the rest of the year. If they had caught it on month one or week one, they could have saved about a hundred thousand in sales. That sales reports are important. Third, receivables reports. It ain't a sale until the money's in the bank. Simple as that. The most common cause of cash flow problems is a failure to keep collections under control. Nobody likes to collect. There's I cover this in the book a lot. You know how to collect, how to not even have them. All right. So daily review or a weekly review review at, prevents surprises and allows you to uh, an improved chance of collection. Because remember, an older an invoice, the less likely it is to get paid. Simply, you know. <laughs> sorry, I was about to repeat myself. Four accounts payable. All right. Too often business owners look at their bank accounts, see that they have enough cash to pay everything, and don't worry about it. Go out and buy a big piece of equipment, a new car, take a vacation, whatever, fund their their uh, retirement plan early, pay their taxes early, whatever. Yeah, that last one never happens. But anyways, um, but what they don't look at, and they don't know, and only their bookkeeper knows, is, is and they don't look at, so they don't realize it's there, is that, yeah, they may have collected a bunch of receivable and have 50000 or or 100000 in the bank, but they might have 200000 they got to pay in the next 30 days. So it's important to know what your obligations are. First of all, it helps you sleep better at night, and it, you need to keep, especially when things are bad, you need to keep good, relationships with your vendors and creditors all right and finally the fifth one how much cash you got profit is great but the only thing that matters is cash i've had a lot of companies over the years not a lot but i've had more than my you know probably not more than my share all right i've seen companies that made profits on books but had no cash in the bank it was all sitting in inventory receivables and they bought equipment and you can run at a loss for bought equipment and you can run at a loss for a while if you have cash. You can't run without cash, even if you show a profit. So that one is one of those you should look at almost every day, but at least once a week, and review what's going on. It, I've had a couple of large fraud clients get hit with bookkeeper fraud, whereas if they just signed on, I have my phone set up, which is about to fall out of my back pocket, but we can all do this. Just about every bank has it where you can set up a security alert, where I have my bank that sends me a security alert whenever I, I, something hits the bank for over a certain amount. That would have stopped the fraud right there. All right? Look, higher profit, the most, like I said, the most highly profitable businesses I've ever worked with are almost always run by owners who know their numbers. They value the information from the accounting reports and what they provide. And, you know, sorry. And so they often hire an experienced CPA to help them analyze them. It's simple as that. So uh, as they get bigger, they, you know, I usually come in once a quarter or so and help them analyze what's there. As the, as the business gets more complicated. But this is a habit you should get into even when you're small. Those five reports, go back, rewatch this. Um, I'm going to say it again just as a refresher. Not going to have a video next week. It's the day before the October 15th deadline, which tends to be one of our most stressful and tough ones, so I'm not even going to think about it. We'll see you the week after, God willing. <laughs> you know? So until next time, let's make this our most profitable year ever. Thank you very much.